on the Yep. So we are here at the ZNB Center for uh, Microscopy and uh, Data Analysis at University of Zurich. And uh, the ID score mount, uh, clear brain uh, is already mounted in the setup. So it is a sample from Anna Maria Royce uh, who will present the talk in the afternoon. And, uh, I will just talk uh, uh, how to use that screen. So the software has three windows. Uh, this is the main window with uh, controls. So sample uh, translation, sample rotation, moving sample in C, so, uh, so towards or away from the detection lens, and focusing the detection lens. Uh, so here, um, the controls uh, wheel, it is motorized. Uh, to me, uh, for one bar, uh, one bar uh, filter to block laser and allow the ratings. Uh, zoom is motorized. Uh, it's, it's, it's uh, zoom values and illuminating can be uh, from the left or right side. So start uh, like How it looks uh, from the user side, I will close it because it's a little disturbing. Question uh, uh, to the QRS channel. Just to focus. Okay, the sample. The sample has two channels. Uh, the green channel uh, uh, is um, an alloy flex um, die, and the red channel how it was the vascular choice. So we are currently imaging the green channel for APA. We can just adjust the settings from the G. Um, so the navigation uh, is um, quite straightforward. You can move the sample uh, through the light shift towards or away from your uh, detection uh, objective. And if you switch the uh, illumination side, you will see that uh, one uh, sample side is uh, better illuminated has higher contrast than the other for large samples like mouse samples. Uh, so usually we recommend that um, the light sheet settings are saved in individual files. So every user has uh, their own setting. For example, this is mine uh, for DB. So I just um, user loads uh, the file and um, the file contains information about uh, light sheet uh, settings uh, which are specific to uh, laser, zoom, uh, left right illumination. And we can, of course, many uh, optimize other settings if we have time uh, after the main part. Um, well, I optimized uh, the uh, light sheet settings uh, before uh, the session, of course, and uh, there is no much much tweaking uh, required at this point. Uh, one uh, feature that is very useful uh, for users is autofocus, and so you can just uh, select a uh, region of interest where we want to uh, focus our uh, 
detection of this is and it takes several snapshots and finds the position where the focus is the best. It is a Gaussian heating, and the algorithm finds the best the heat of the Gaussian heat. It's uh, robust and works reliable. For example, if we uh, now change, go to light again. We can now change the focus manually by 100 microns and repeat the autofocus, which should show us that we are off by 100 microns. So, yeah, it shows the difference. Uh, I hope you see my mouse. Uh, yes, yes, okay. that's some. So, it shows that we are off by 103 microns. So um, now I will show you uh, how to acquire stack. The, uh, there's two channels. Um, so let's say you want uh, the current zoom, 1x, so your sample uh, its entire field of view. Um, you uh, activate your focus and uh, other settings in live review. So you go to the beginning of the stack. Uh, by pressing the C lower values, we have all section code. So we want to start from here. And also, uh, this is what we call acquisition manager. This, um, uh, this table controls um, your acquisition parameters for your stack. So to take all the current parameters from right view, we click uh, mark all. And it takes x, y position, uh, rotation position, uh, focus position, where we currently are. So here, laser, current intensity, and you can also change it manually, let's say, 10%. Current filter, zoom, and shutter configuration left, um, and so on. So all the current parameters. Uh, we here need to uh, click. The, we want uh, the step to start from current position, so this um, button F for mark, mark the position, and then we go into live mode and we end, go to the end of the stack where we want to stop. In. ZN. Now, uh, this will be uh, 500 uh, frames approximately. Uh, for the sake of time, I will make uh, this step very large. So let's say 50 micron. Uh, usually, we use 5 micron, 3 micron, or uh, some, something in that range. But for the sake of uh, demonstration, I will set 50. Uh, and now, let's uh, uh, go to live mode back and add another channel. So we are somewhere in the mouse vortex, we change to 561 uh, laser and we increase the intensity. So this is uh, on our blood vessel label. So now we can uh, duplicate the row. So uh, most of the settings will be uh, the same, position, start to end, uh, but um, settings specific to the laser will be different, so we click again mark all, and now uh, the laser has changed its intensity, and it's now what we have in live mode, and the electrotunable lens, so the PTA values are different because they are laser specific. Mm, so this is um, a very simple basic application. Uh, now we need to set the folders, so click set folders button. Create a folder for the experiment. 
And now we need to save a uh, file. So for simple acquisitions, um, you can use uh, zip files, which you don't have uh, many channels or many files. So every channel will be saved in individual zip file. So uh, the files should not be duplicated in this table. So we give file name wizard. So that's if and add some experiment description. So these are our file names now, which uh, also have important information about the channel and about the shop uh, So this is the uh, most basic uh, step acquisition setup. Uh, now uh, we are ready to take the stack and uh, just click run a quick list. And it takes images. The sample folder is uh, better than 3D printed also here locally uh, from Milan. You can find the same files on GitHub. Uh, so we have only 100 planes per channel. It's uh, not that much. That's why it uh, finishes very quickly. And we are done with this. And basically, your experiment um, data is saved uh, into two T files, and every T file has a meta metadata file which contains um, what we see information about uh, laser intensity, zoom, pixel size, and uh, other. Uh, microscope parameters. Now, uh, this was very simple acquisition, of course. Um, you can uh, do much more. Uh, let's uh, remove all, it, uh, all the rows and let's do uh, uh, multi tile acquisition. So we will have um, higher zoom with webs. Uh, the focus changes uh, just because of the microscope optics at different focus positions in different zoom settings. So we need to do out of focus again. Let's run it one more time, a smaller focus interval. So at uh, zoom uh, two, we will have uh, four tiles. So a grid of uh, two by two tiles. And uh, to make this easy for you as users, uh, you can go to file tiling wizard. Button, and uh, now this menu allows you to set the tiling grid. Now, where the tiling will start and end. So we go again to light mode. And we go to um, the top of the sample. It's a little bit hard to read. Can you uh, read out what the tiling was says there? Uh, so yeah, it says um, uh, set XY start corner. Uh, set Y start, set X start, set Y end, X end, and set X Y end corner. 
and set Z start and set Z end and Z step side. Make the form of So I will click uh, set Y start. So this is the top of our sample. This is the bottom of the sample. Now let's go to the left side. Uh, let's start. And extend. And then we go to the start of the step. It says somewhere. Start uh, again. I will set the Z step size fifteen, and we go to C and uh, here you can define the number of channels. I will use two zoom, current zoom, uh, two X. Shutter, you can choose left, uh, right, or you can also click uh, this checkbox. Uh, this will populate the table uh, with left and then right uh, configuration. In the view size, the take is automatically uh, overlap uh, is 10%. So the tiles will be overlapping by 10% for stitching. Uh, and then click next. Uh, and this uh, shows you how many uh, tiles you will have. So it will be two tiles in uh, X dimension and two tiles in Y dimension. So you click next. And you configure the first channel. You just click copy current laser intensity and filter. And we are already at uh, the optimal focus. It clicks at set start focus and set end focus. And then we configure channel two. Uh, so let's um, um, go to channel two, 561. Increase the intensity, make it 30. Uh, take all the current parameters and copy them here. And also say start focus and end focus. And now we select the uh, folder. Create our folder experiment and click uh, OK. And now it uh, automatically suggests us. Uh, uh, file format uh, for such a multi-tile, multi-channel uh, acquisition, I highly recommend uh, H5 format, compatible with Big Data Viewer, Big Feature. Uh, so uh, you can also have other options as well. Description tiles with next. So all the raw data will be written into single uh, H file file and this is your acquisition table so it's, it has 16 uh, steps uh, and uh, for each channel let's say for 88 uh, there's left elimination and then right elimination and so this is repeated for each tile position uh, um, so we can also if we want to reuse uh, the table later, let's say for uh, the same or a very similar uh, sample, uh, we can click save table, and give it a name.
uh, now we can keep uh, some questions. And we just watch um, the image. Are there any questions um, at this point? Uh, Gabriela, uh, please. Uh, yes, um, I was wondering, um, I see that uh, for setting the filters, uh, you choose uh, one of the filters, and I guess this is the mission feed filter. Um, but are, uh, are there, uh, yeah, yeah are, are there also uh, filters for the excitation light, for like the laser to ensure it's monochromatic or so? Uh, no, because it's um, guaranteed by the laser manufacturer that it's monochromatic. Ah, okay, great. Thank you. Nikita, there's a question in the chat from Francesco. Uh, thanks for sharing the demo. How did you implement the focus controller? Did you motorize the camera position? Yeah, exactly. So I motorized the camera position. The camera um, is uh, uh, mounted together with the detection uh, lens. So they move together as a, uh, one entity and uh, their position is motorized. Um, and what is the autofocus based on? So it is uh, a published paper. It will be on my, in my talk in the afternoon. It is um, based on a Loic Royer uh, paper in 2018, I think. It's a, it's a Shannon uh, information of discrete cosine transform. So basically, uh, the authors went uh, through, I don't know, like 20 different metrics for light sheet um, imaging, and they found that this metric works the best for light sheet. OK, thank you. Um, Anna stepien Cerniaka asked, what is the staining used in this example? So this is uh, APTS mouse. Uh, from Anna Maria Royce. Um, uh, the amyloid plugs, uh, they are labeled with HFEAA uh, dye, um, and the blood vessels uh, are labeled with uh, CY3 C integrated antibody. So the fluorophores are um... HFEAA. Okay. Um, uh, it's uh, some green dye which labels in a white flag and so I think. Yes, thank you. Okay, Nikita, Liki? yes, yeah. please. Uh, Nikita, so you have illumination only from one side or there, there, is, there are two uh, One side at a time. So uh, the acquisition takes uh, a stack with one illumination and then the next stack is stack with the other. So now what we see is only one side, or you do one. Uh, one side at a time. One side at a time. Yeah. So, but in the final data set, there will be both eliminations. Merge. Well, not merge. They they will be present together, and they can be computationally merged into a single image using big feature. Uh, the Bela. Uh, yes. So. Uh, so the full power of the laser is is illuminating at uh, each time, uh, right? Because uh, you said that the illumination is one side at a time. So so it, the power of the laser doesn't share uh, like uh, into each side. It's fully uh, at one side when when you are illuminating at one side. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not sure I uh, got the question. I no, just because when I saw it was two side illumination. I thought kind of half of the power of the laser was going to one side and half to the other oh, side. Oh, okay, yeah. No, uh, we actually on this setup, um, uh, we have two independent lasers and um, yeah, there's switching. The ah, software okay. switches, so it's full power. Well, according to the software settings, it's 20% of the full power goes to one side, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And one more thing, do you always uh, do this uh, uh, two sides illumination or you, if you have uh, uh, sometimes using just one side? For small samples um, and uh, very good hearing, uh, often one uh, side is enough. Uh, 
um, for something, let's say, maybe three millimeters large, three, five millimeters large, is good that imaging of one is very often enough. For mouse brains and larger samples, um, usually two sides uh, is, is a better option. So yeah, there's a question good. from Rui Santos. How do you align both images that come from each side of the illumination? Um, so this can be done um, in, again, in this feature. Um, I, uh, usually I try to align both arms optically, so we don't need the software alignment uh, um, post-processing, but this can be um, pretty straightforward done in this um, feature. Uh, Gabriela, did you have a question? Gabriela, Ahu. Ah, sorry, uh, I, I just forgot to, to lower the hand. Thanks. Uh, so there is a, a question from Christian Schulze. What makes you choose between left, right illumination, and sample rotation? Um, I very uh, rarely use the sample rotation. Uh, usually it's just one position. Um, left and right illumination. Um, Again, oftentimes it's, it's uh, best to use uh, uh, each of them. Uh, sometimes the uh, samples uh, have um, uh, some unclear structures um, which uh, obscure the light propagation. And so then uh, one side will be much better than the other. So it depends on the sample. What is the, the medium that uh, you have dipped in the, the sample? Uh, so it is a DB, DB is new ether. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a high refractive index um, solvent, uh, which is um, commonly used for iron score. Really. So we are close to finish the acquisition. I will uh, start the uh, PG and show you how to open the data in this feature. PG is not very fast uh, in the volume, so uh, but um, I will just briefly mention again the uh, file structure here. All the raw data is written into this file, H5. Uh, and no matter what you do in this feature plugin, it, it does not change. So your data always remains the same. Um, all the metadata uh, is written into these two files. So metadata, which is specific to this feature, um, is in XML file, such as channel, um, name, uh, file position, and all the microscope specific position is in this uh, text file. So to load uh, uh, this data into this feature, you go to plugins, feature, and then you just drag and drop uh, the XML file. And we have uh, 14 gigabytes of uh, raw data. So this feature actually contains, it's, it's a bundle of two software um, um, tools, a big data viewer, which uh, uh, allows you to visualize uh, the data, and big feature, which does the processing. And so this is one tile. Uh, you can also ungroup channels, so we have 16 uh, steps here, and we can um, interactively explore different channels, different tiles. Let's say we want only 
488 uh, eliminated by the left uh, R. You can change the coloring. And we, by the way, we have um, on YouTube, in the Zuskin channel, uh, I posted a few months ago a uh, standard tutorial how to process uh, such data in these features. So please check it out. Uh, and so we can go on the 561 channel left elimination. And say we want to just to look up there one. And there are a lot of options. Uh, select best eliminations, the stage data set, um, uh, register. Um, so for registration, you can also uh, change between stitching and registration mode. So this is the registration mode. Um, you can detect interest points here, a very powerful feature. The register uh, the views. Uh, for the elimination, different eliminations with interest points and so on and so forth. So it's very powerful software. Um, do you have any more questions at this point? Because I think that's um, the main part. Um, maybe um, since we still have some time left, maybe I can show you how to adjust the light shift parameters, because this is a nice feature. Um, it's, it's very simple. Uh, first thing, you need to remove your sample from the light shift plane, otherwise you will damage in the region. You um, uh, change the uh, filter to empty alignment. So this is just scattered laser that you see now. And now we go to the ETA uh, tab and we click this button, increase colors. This stops the light sheet generation. Now we uh, see only um, stationary beam. So it's not moving up, up and down. It, it is parked at, um, in the middle position. So no light sheet is generated. That's why uh, it is important to remove the sample with damage. So this is central. And now um, it is still uh, being scanned in the axial direction. Uh, to stop uh, this as well, you can uh, click this button uh, and put it right to zero. And now this is really uh, your Gaussian beam uh, without any scanning. This is how it looks. So it has uh, the thinnest part uh, called the waste is here. And this is what is used for um, uh, um, image, uh, uh, like optical section uh, when it is synchronized with the camera. And now uh, what we uh, do here is we want to bring, uh, by, uh, uh, we want to bring it to the center of the image by changing the offset. So I changed the offset menu, and now you see the thinnest part of the beam is here. This is what we want. And now we uh, adjust the amplitude of the scanning, excel scanning, until the light sheet becomes like a middle, like a uniformly thin uh, beam. So if we set it too low or too high, then it starts diverging here uh, on the sides. But when it is about right, um, it is more more or less uh, uniformly unseen in this direction. And now we uh, stop. And so this is parameter optimized for right arm, two uh, x um, uh, zoom, and four eighty eight. Uh, excitation wavelengths. So we click save current parameters to CSV 
which is saved to this uh, file. And this can be reused uh, in the next session or, uh, on the next day if you use the same clearing uh, method, uh, and the same chamber size. And uh, when you're done, you can uh, click on freeze goggles, change um, back to uh, finishing filter, and go back to the center. Uh, again, this uh, this technique is uh, posted on our YouTube channel. So if you uh, want to refresh it, please check it out. Uh, with that, I suggest that we uh, close this session. If you don't have Peter, there's maybe a last question here yeah. to Kayak. Uh, what lens are you currently using, and what would be the data size for a five micrometer set step with the whole for the whole brain with this lens? Uh, so this is um, yeah, the Olympus 1X uh, lens with zoom body uh, as published in the original MetaTeam paper and on, uh, on the wiki. Um, this, the data size, um, so basically will be 10 times higher, uh, will be 140 uh, gigabytes of data. Uh, with two channels, four tiles. Is there a question? Uh, uh, I don't doesn't seem to be the case. Yeah. I don't hear you very well. No, I, I believe this is not a question. This is ah, okay. Uh, okay. okay. So I suggest we, uh, uh, we have a lunch break now, depending on your uh, time zone, maybe breakfast break. And we continue at 1 p.m. Central European time with, uh, with the new speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nikita, yeah. I just want to ask you something quickly. Uh, how do you, how do, have you mounted the, the sample here? Because I see this... Uh, uh, weird uh, thing on the bottom, which like it's, has, uh, it's, it's, it's just a clamp. It's a 3D printed clamp. Oh, yeah. uh, and why do you use this? Sorry, sorry why is it Lame, please, can you? Can some? I'm not the host, Nikita. Can we? Oh, mute sorry, Christophe Lamy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is just a clamp consisting of two parts. Oh. So the upper part is moving, it, it's mm -hmm. the jaw is moving up and down. Mm -hmm. And the lower part is connected to this rod. And uh, you know, it's like um, woodworker's plan. It, 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 it just moves up and down and uh, you can secure your sample yeah. um, of different sizes. In it. And there is so this black uh, thing in between. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just a black foil uh, to uh, cover uh, this white uh, rod that connects uh, the lower yeah. jaw to the face. Uh, this prevents uh, reflection, so it minimizes the background. Good, good, thank you. And, and then the, the I... design is available on the website. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's very good. And then uh, you have dipped this cuvette within oil? Uh, compatible oil. Uh, again, this is DBE. DBE ah, again, it's DBE. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Good, good. Thank you very much. Okay, cool. So, see you all later.